Welcome back everyone, Mike McConville here, Stratford, Ontario, Canada for String Tech Workstations. So we got this brand new Strat, I mean, in that protective plastic, they're still on the guitar. But this guy has been to multiple shops. I gotta bring you in close to show you the action on this thing. Okay, so this is how he got his guitar back after bringing it in several times. I've said this over and over and over again. When the action's that high, you'll never tune this guitar. But it's not just about it being ridiculously hard to play. It's like, a, this is not a cheap Strat. This is a high-end Strat. We need to dress the frets at that top end. How many times have you heard me say that? Let's have a look at this other guitar. Okay, Jonathan dropped this one off, and it's not brand spanking new, but it's fairly new, and it's an American Strat. And here you go. Here's the action on that Strat. He keeps bringing it in, gets it worked on, gets it back. It's never right. So we're going to be doing these two strats in tandem, and they're both getting compensated nuts. So that's where we're going to start with the compensated nut. So I'm going to start with this strat that Jonathan dropped off. We're going to heat that up, slip that out. This one actually does have some playing wear on it, so we're going to be doing fret dress end to end. Both this one and James's uh, brand new uh, HSS strat, humbucker in the bridge, single coil, single coil. These will both be getting the full treatment compensated nut. And before I take care of that problem at the top end, I'm going to bring you in again with a straight edge and a feeler gauge and show you exactly what the problem is. Same deal with this one. We'll bring you in with a straight edge and a feeler gauge and we'll get right down to it. Well, first things first, we'll get the strings off of Jonathan's guitar. We're going to do these two strats in tandem so you're going to play by play as always. Oh, this has got the locking tuners too. Cool. I mean, the machine heads weren't even tightened up. So let's start there. Now, I have definitely mentioned this, and don't over torque these things. Just tighten them up until that washer stops rattling. This is normal. Uh, the, the wood and the uh, finish shrinks ever so slightly and they need to be tightened up. It's a simple thing. Like I said, don't over torque them. A three-year-old could strip these. So that's taken care of. Well, all my regular subscribers know the deal on this one. Four minutes. Okay, let's give that another try. Oh, yes! Now, of course, this one does not have the thick-skinned, high-gloss finish. This is almost a dead flat lacquer. So let's heat that up. Okay, we're not taking any chances on this one. Better safe than sorry. So I'm going to go ahead and score that. Let's see what kind of luck we have with this one. Oh, okay, that was much less of a struggle. All you regulars know that I'm big on getting a low-tech solution to a high-tech problem. That fender nut is 128 thou. There's where we start with our nut blank. We've got the convex radius of the fingerboard and the concave radius of the fingerboard. The convex radius of the nut slot and the concave radius of the nut slot. So there's a couple of different ways you can start this process for the fender nuts. So this radius disc sander for your drill press will be available in the new year for my Patreon subscribers first and then anyone else if there's any left over. Yeah, 
Yeah, we've got quite a ways to go. That's 188. Another quick read on that. It is 154. Just a little bit more. We're within a few thou of the finish thickness. So the rest I can actually just brush that down on the disc, kind of checking it as I go. I'm, I'm after 128 here. 130. 131. <laughs> okay, at this point, I'm going to switch gears. I'm going to cut the radius on the lip. This is the ledge or the overhang. So that's my convex radius template. We'll just trace that. There we go. We'll cut that next. Happy with that. So I use that slot radius gauge to trace the uh, slot radius on the leg. Checking as we go here. So we'll go check that against the guitar. So for James's guitar, this is the final fit for the nut blank. And this is the final fit for Jonathan's nut blank. I'm going to set both those nut blanks aside now and then we're going to get on with the frets. So we're going to start with uh, Jonathan's guitar here as far as the frets go. I went over the whole thing with a short straight edge. It's almost perfect. There's just one spot right here. When you use the short straight edge, everything looks fine. Well, let's, let's try a longer straight edge and see what happens. Okay, so as you can see, this straight edge goes full length of the neck. Everything looked fine until we used the full length straight edge. So I've got that feeler gauge under there, and it stops right there four frets back from the top fret. Let's go to the edge of the fingerboard and same thing, four frets back. Treble side, four frets back. So it's only these top four frets, they have been the issue. So let's have a look at James's guitar. So I did the same thing with a little short straight edge bridging three frets at a time. It's perfect, almost when we put that full length straight edge up. Starting from here, with the 11th fret, we go up and it's 4th fret, outside edge, same thing, that's the 5th fret. Over to the treble side, and that is the 4th fret. Both guitars, same issue, over and over and over again. I correct what these CNC machines miss. So we're going to dress that top end and it will no longer be necessary to hike those strings up to a ridiculous height to get rid of the buzzing because we're going to take care of that problem right here. This guitar is on the XLT unit and there's no problem dressing those top frets. We're not worried about that center of the neck flexing. We're not touching that with a file. It's only up here. Let's do a quick dress on that and check it again. Okay, let's have another look. Nothing. Center of the board, nothing. Treble side, nothing. Well, obviously this has to be recrowned and polished and I'll buff end to end. But the point I'm making, and I've made over and over again, in dozens if not 50 videos. I don't have a CNC fret dressing machine. When it comes to this exact fret dress, this is by far the most common fret dress that you'll encounter. That problem right there was preventing this guitar from being set up beautifully and playing smooth as silk. Let's have a look at Jonathan's guitar. Although this guitar is on the GPS unit, I do this particular job regularly, as you just saw on the XLT. Now there was one high spot here, we're going to breeze over that, hear that grabbing, and then those top four frets, very lightly breezing over, 
Now you see I move obliquely across the fret because the fret crown of course has a curvature so in order to follow that curvature that's how you need to file. I don't turn the file, the file is kept in line with the string path as I do this. You know, it's as much about listening as it is looking. I can feel and hear the resistance to the file dissipate as we reach our mark. Let's check it now. Here's the center of the fingerboard. Nothing. Base side of the fingerboard. Laser straight. Travel side of the fingerboard. We're done. Well, we're not quite done. It needs to be recrowned and polished. So the point I'm making, and I've made over and over and over again in countless videos, is all of the Tech Deck guys regularly take care of these issues that these CNC machines seem to miss. In fact, we've got one customer from Pennsylvania that owns one of these CNC machines. He ordered three Tech Decks, two GPS and one XLT. Why? Well, he said he used them for pre and post. CNC. Think about that one. Okay, on with the crown. I know I keep repeating this, but I have to say it again. Don't touch the center of the crown. All we're doing is taking those sharp edges off that were left by the leveling file. Now I am right at the body, so I'll have to come around this side to finish the treble side of the fingerboard. Well, since we're doing these in tandem, let's go over to Jonathan's guitar. Same thing again. Don't touch the center of the crown. I'm doing equal strokes on each side of that fret. Chasing those crowns back to center, not dead center. We're going to do that on the next step. Again, because we're right at the body, I'll have to come around the other side. I might block the camera. That's better. Okay, now you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so now the other side of the fret, and there was that one spot here that uh, I got to recrown too. That was, that was the only discrepancy between these two necks, other than that neck to body junction, was right here on Jonathan's guitar. So I'm taking care of that. We're going to prepare this for the next stage. Now I can feel that this needs an edge dress as well, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. James's guitar did not need an edge dress, it was fine. Okay, next. So I've got this 400 grit. These are the scrub blocks that I supply you guys in your kits. And we're going to basically just remove the tooler marks of the file. That's all we're doing. I'm not touching this end of the fingerboard with a 400. Just that top end where we had to correct. Got two pieces of 400 for good measure. This flexible vinyl distorts and slurs over the crowns and basically scrubs them back to center. Okay, over to James's guitar. Same deal. 400 grit to get rid of the uh, tooling marks of the file. I just kind of slip that paper around the scrub block. And get a little bit more use out of that sandpaper. Is our second piece of 400?
Here's our 600, and that's basically taking out the marks of the 400. And the frets on this guitar are amazing. I won't even use a 600 on this end of the guitar because the frets are beautiful. But I, I will go full length with the emery cloth. So this is second, second bout of 600. And another piece of 600. Again, you can hear, you can hear things get real quiet here as uh, you go to the higher grades. Okay, here's our emery cloth. We'll go full length with the emery cloth. Second piece of emery cloth. Now we're ready to buff. Seeing as we're doing these in tandem, let's go back to Jonathan's guitar. Same thing once again, we'll clean up that those 400 grit scratches with the six. And I am actually going full length on this one with the six because uh, it's a little bit of wear marks. Get rid of those wear marks at the top end here. So the second piece of 600 grit. And our Amory clock. Second piece of emery cloth. James's guitar, same thing. Now we'll get to the compensated nuts on both these guitars. This is James's Strat. It is done. And for you Patreon guys, a couple of tips I want to give you. So this is the completely calibrated compensated nut for the 10 to 46 strings for this guitar. Now what I have sitting in front of that nut is the original nut. One tip I want to give you is always start with those two outside strings. Cut those slots first and then you can futz around and kind of line up those middle four just to make sure the spacing is bang on the money. Before I smooth this out and make it look pretty and do the final fit I just wanted you to have a close look at the values 10 to 46, 25 and a half inch scale, tuned concert pitch. Cheers! Now that we've taken care of those upper frets, this is where the action lies now. You saw it earlier on in the video. This is what we ended up with. So I'm going to take it in the house, plug it in, let's have a listen. Here's a progression in A major. <laughs> Again, I'll just kind of flick these pickups around and let you hear this guitar. Here we go.
I'll try doubling some chords over top of this so you can hear again the uh, calibration of the guitar for uh, tuning. Here we go. sort of break in the strings and kind of balance the springs on a brand new strat like this I'll uh, I'll go through this sequence pluck in the string give the bar a tap strings are just about stretched in so this has been set up for dive only. So you can't pull back, you can only push down. We've got kind of maximum K value on those three springs in the back. Tighten them right up. This is how I do my final check to make sure everything's settled. sort of sculpted heel on this uh, Strat Ultra. It's got a very low D profile neck and of course it's got the uh, Fender locking tuners. And this is the HSS model, so humbucker in the bridge and two single coils. It also has the sort of S1 switching. Got like a little detent in there. I don't know, to my ears, it's just a little thicker, a little thinner. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen this before. Sort of list of the features here. So these are the features of this one. Ultra modern D-neck with tapered heel. That's a compound radius, 10 to 14 inch. The noiseless pickups, I guess, are the other feature. So let's have a listen. We'll go through a few simple chords and just listen to the overall intonation end to end. So. got the trim set up so that it's pulled tight against the top. We got full K value on those springs in the back. So it is dive only. They've recorded a little kind of A blues vamp thing just we'll let that play and just flick the pickups around and uh, let you hear this Strat Ultra. 
Here we go. Everything's wide open at this point.
Thank you.